What's up, guys? Bloodshed here. Welcome to podcast episode number 20. Now, 20 is my favorite number. If you don't know, I was born June 20th. It's the last day of being a Gemini, if you care about the Zodiac. But it's also the first time we're doing a video podcast. So it does take more logistical work to get everything set up. The videos take longer to render and to get, you know, all the visuals, basically everything lined up perfectly and editing takes longer. But through to, due to popular request, we're just going to do a video version of the podcast. And I have a setup here I kind of threw together. If you want to watch the video version, um, definitely check out youtube.com slash bloodshed. It's not going to affect my upload schedule. Um, we should still post episodes uh, Tuesday mornings, 10 a.m. Pacific. But if you want to watch the video version, it's exclusive to YouTube now. And then this little box right here, if you're listening to it, I basically have a little box where I'm just going to put all the images so we can go through them together. I kind of have like a news theory crafting type podcast. So, yeah. And the format is not going to go back to the old format just yet because we do have BlizzCon coming up. And this is like a BlizzCon predictions episode, but we'll get into that right now. We have a lot of stuff coming out that we have to cover. Um, but eventually we're going to get to like the older format once, you know, news slows down. But right now news is off the hook. So let's get into it. So this week's topics include the season 18 end date got announced, more Diablo 4 leaks and uh, my, you know, BlizzCon predictions episode. So let's go ahead and get into it. We also have more stuff to talk about. So. Greetings Nephilim with the end of 267 PTR, we're working on preparing for the patch launch. So if you don't know, we actually get the patch before we get the season. Usually the patch is on like a Tuesday and then on Friday we get the season, but it could be like a week and a half. We can have like a little bit of extra time. I'm hoping we have some extra time with the PTR since we didn't get to thoroughly check, you know, the monk set and the crusader set could actually use some more testing. Season 18 will be ending on November 10th at 5 p.m. PST, Europe, 5 p.m. CET, and Asia, 5 p.m. KST. They did mention something about daylight savings down here, so it's all adjusted and everything like that, apparently. We'll be announcing the Season 19 start dates, so we don't have this yet. We only have the end date for Season 18 with the Season 19 preview blog, which will be available before the launch of patch 267. I didn't think we were gonna get any um, communication just because, you know, like they're busy with BlizzCon, they have a lot of stuff coming up, but it's kind of cool that they reached out to us ahead of time and gave us a two week warning for the end of season 18. The first thing that comes to my mind is we don't need a two week warning for the end of the season, but it's appreciated. It's appreciated, you know? I want a two week warning for the start of a season. That way people can plan their lives and, uh, you know, people got kids. You might want to get a sitter. I don't know, man. Uh, you might want to get time off of school or work or, you know, plan accordingly, have someone take notes for you in class. I guess it's Friday night, so it, maybe you won't be in school unless you have night school or something. But I don't know, man. People got lives. You you want to make a hot date or something for that night. So a two week warning at the start of next season would be much, much, much appreciated. But this is a good step in the right direction. Getting any kind of communications always appreciated. So now the big question is, yo blood, yo, 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 yo blood, whoa, yo blood, yo, when's the start of season 19? Okay, so they said that they're gonna announce it soon, but we like to get our predictions on. So now that we know November 10th, the season ends. So the season ends right here on a Sunday. It, Pretty much always ends on a Sunday. Now that we know that, um, typically we get the patch Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on how like busy they are. Sometimes there's like game breaking bugs that slow them down. Sometimes there's bugs like that, but typically the season's been ending here and starting the first Friday here. Typically that's how it's been going the last three seasons or so. Um, there's a, some big ramifications for the 15th. The first is, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Damn it, I was supposed to stream it, man. So that kind of sucks. That's the first thing that jumps out of my mind. There might be some other stuff you have going on around the 15th. You also notice that it's less than a three month season. If it does start on the 15th, that's less than three months. We had a season start, have a PTR, and then have a next season come out before even the three month mark. 
So a lot of people have been asking for shorter seasons. This would be one of those. I think what's more likely is the 22nd, and this is what I would want. But the 15th is really compelling, right? Just because that's how it's been going. Like we have um, facts and previous experiences to go off of. I would like it to be the 22nd and get the patch on the 12th. That way we have like a week and a few days, a week and a half to test it and then to do any last minute changes. Since we're not getting a second PTR, basically this is confirming that. We can use the non-season like a PTR and then test it and give some feedback. And before they go live, they can maybe tweak a few more things potentially. So I think, I think they can do that anyway. So that'll give us a little bit more days just to kind of plug in a few more changes before it goes live. So hopefully that's the case. But either way, I have no reason to doubt the current development, development team on Diablo. They've been giving us nonstop bomb content all year long. So hopefully it continues with the next season. The season of the bar, basically, right? So let me know what you guys think if you're excited about the season ending early. I'm kind of on the fence about it. I'm really excited we're getting it soon, but I have to jump on starter videos. In addition to the huge BlizzCon coverage I have Friday, you know, I have to jump on starter videos. So <laughs> that's going to be, yeah, starter videos always take a lot of energy to get, because there's so many, um, like layers to it with the starter builds, leveling guides, and you know, all the push builds that go with it. So it'll be, it'll be fun to get it all together. We'll see. All right, let's talk about some Diablo leaks. I know I haven't done one leak video yet. Um, it's, uh, I, I don't know. I guess I've been through last year and the year before that where we hyped up a bunch of stuff that didn't come true. And I don't want to really get people excited unless I have facts. But there's been so much stuff coming out. Let me just bring up Diablo fans here. I think this got leaked or it brought out on Saturday after my stream. The upcoming Art of Diablo book, which was the source of the potential Diablo 4 leak earlier this week. So we had that one earlier. We had the this right here. Remember this German magazine or whatever mentioned D4 in it. D4 could just be a placeholder for anything. It could just be like Diablo Immortal. They could have meant whatever. But yeah, the Art of Diablo book. The Art of Diablo book even looks more legit. So we'll cover both of the leaks together again, and then we'll show how it could even be more legit. So this is the BlizzCon shopping. There was some Blink shopping, right? It's like you can order, I believe, and then pick up or whatever at BlizzCon. So there's some of the stuff that they're gonna have, like, you know, these little like cute but deadly figures. There's a satyr statue which looks kind of cool i mean i don't really like her face to be honest there's some stuff here and then we have like some artwork so as a barbarian has been the focal point of this blizzcon it's been everywhere i got i actually ordered this sweater and it's 50 dollars. okay the diablo ugly sweater i think it's so cool looking i can't wait to rock it this holiday all right i, I spent it was 49.99 and free shipping was 50 dollars or more and then I looked today and it's $50. Yo, know, I got I got super cucked, man. I got super debated on that. So I don't know Blizzard about that one, man, but we'll get into that another time. Yo, you're gonna hear you're gonna hear from my lawyer. But yo, check it right here. Look at this right here. This is on the actual Blizzard art, right? This is like you can order this stuff from BlizzCon. This is the artwork stuff. It's pretty cool, right? These are prints. This is obviously shows credential to the Art of Diablo book. So Art of Diablo book, which we can't tell if this is real. They could have still photoshopped the, the words or something. But you can see, this is a print. This is the Art of Diablo book, right? So they're using the similar artwork, right? And a lot of the art is like older style, like the Goatmans, even from D1. And yeah, I mean, I mean obviously in all the Diablo games we have Goatman, but it just seems like more older style, like bringing back. So it could be D4, it could be D2 remastered, we don't know. But it just makes this look more legit when you see the crossover here. And I'll show you more crossover, okay? So then you scroll back up, and we go back to what we were talking about. In the upcoming art book, which was the source of a potential D4 leak earlier this week, we had review copies distributed to many establishments. However, it has been reported there was a Lilith page that says Lilith's debut in Diablo 4 
is a reimagining, wait, what, right? D4. Lilith's debut in D4 is a reimagining of her form that is far different from her previous appearances. And they show pictures of Lilith here. So look, right, it's super dope. One thing about this picture that's supposedly in the Art of Diablo book that mentions D4 yet again are these dope wings. These could be the BlizzCon wings, right? That's pretty cool looking, right? So you got these interesting wings and shout out to Diablo fans for putting this in a nice organized fashion for us. These could be the wings that we're getting potentially. And you know, it's very Diablo-like obviously and really cool. And um, everything about it is awesome. That whole picture is just super dope. So the art book has a link from the page to the website. And then if you look here, here's another page supposedly that was leaked. And then let's check the website. The playing cards. Looks like it has that reimagined Lilith with the horns and the big wings and everything like that on it. Can I zoom in even even more? Right? It's kind of similar, right? You can see here. Whoops. You can see here Lilith and then Lilith on the playing cards. So there's two things on the shop that mirror the BlizzCon and the art book. And, you know, but they could have just changed the numbers or Photoshop something. I haven't seen it with my own eyes, so it's hard to say exactly. But, uh, and I don't really get into, I try not to get into this like hype and rumors and stuff. And I particularly don't like leaks either because it kind of spoils the huge announcement. But damn if it doesn't look credible, right? Damn if it doesn't look like something that is true. So I'll let you guys know what, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. We're going to talk about our predictions coming up here shortly. But uh, man, it looks credible, right? All right, let's get on to our BlizzCon predictions. Now, I have the normal predictions that you're thinking. We're going to cover those. And then I'm going to stretch and um, think of something crazy that might get announced at BlizzCon that maybe no one's thought of. So uh, let's get into it. So if you know about the BlizzCon virtual ticket, you get like World of Warcraft, in-game goodies, Overwatch, Hearthstone, etc. For Diablo, we don't know what wings are. So my first prediction of the wings, I'm gonna take a double prediction here. My first prediction for the wings are Valkyr wings. I think this are the wings that we're gonna get. I think it's gonna coincide with a World of Warcraft expansion. There's gonna be some crossover. They have done crossover events in the past. Like we have had like the Legion wings in WoW, the Overwatch wings from Overwatch, right? And um, so I think they're gonna be Valkyr wings is my prediction on the Diablo wings. As soon as we know, I'm gonna follow me, you know, twitter.com slash bloodshed, instagram.com slash bloodshed. I'm gonna tweet them out as soon as we find out at BlizzCon. I will be there all weekend long, just tweeting out information. So yeah, make sure to throw me a follow on that one. I really think it's going to be a Sylvanas themed expansion. She is on the banner outside of the building. She's been a focus point of the story for a, a long time here. So I think these are would look cool in Diablo. I want them also. And part of it is I want them in Diablo. The second wings that they could be, right? This is my second guess on this prediction, I guess, would be uh, the Lilith wings. So we had a lot of Lilith talk today and um, there was an artwork that got released last year when or leaked when they were going to do the comic book. So here's more Lilith talk with the playing cards, with the art book, and now with the comic book. I think Lilith Wings is a strong guess as well. I could see it going either way. It could be Valkyr or Lilith Wings. Either way, I want both of them in my Diablo 3. And um, that'd be cool if, speaking of leaks, I guess, we got the comic book or the Netflix series that was um, rumored last year. Hopefully it's just, they give us the freaking shebang, like all the announcements in one. Um, it'll be actually glorious if we get that much content all in one BlizzCon. So Lilith Wings, our Valkyr Wings, are gonna be the BlizzCon virtual ticket for my first prediction. My second prediction would be, um, yeah, I think we're gonna get Diablo 4 announced to some capacity. I think it's going to be a trailer with gameplay. I don't know if a teaser would suffice this year. I mean, I'm not gonna rage or anything, but I think we're gonna get a trailer this year and a little bit of gameplay, even if it's like say 30 seconds of gameplay or there's a panel based around it, kind of even going into more detail, talking about the systems and the plan and whether it's gonna be an MMO or like a first person game or isometric, you know, um, I think D4 is gonna get announced um, 
Yeah, that's just that's my guess. <laughs> Yo, what do you guys think? What what class do you want returning in D4? And what do you think is going to get announced? I think it's going to be for sure Barb, a mage archetype, whether it's a sorceress or a wizard. And I think Monk is should be a shoe in. I feel like Monk is really strong, really popular. And I think those three would be guaranteed to get in. And then my fourth guaranteed would be a Demon Hunter. I feel like Vavala is so popular. And like they see the data. They know Monk is highly played. You know, Demon Hunter is highly played. These are really popular classes that we've spent years with up to this point. I think those four are pretty much locked in. And the Necro is also in Diablo Immortal. The Necro seems like he might be in a future expansion or he might launch with the actual game. Let me know what you guys think. I'm curious. I just I like to see everyone's comments on this and then it kind of gives me a broader um, understanding of what people think is the, the most popular classes or like what you would really want to see more than anything. I predict the alpha for Diablo 4 will be sometime next year, like in June, and then the game will release either at the end of 2020 or sometime in 2021. I'd say like June 2020 for an alpha and hopefully we get access to it. Blizzard, blood loves you. <laughs> yeah. Send me an invite. Just do it, okay? Just do it. For Diablo Mortal, I believe it'll be out by the end of the year, maybe in December. And yeah, it'll be, it'll have a box price and some, you know, like things you can pay for. Like, I don't think it'll be completely pay to win, but they'll definitely be like, maybe the game will be like, five dollars like i'd say 4.99 and microtransactions it, it might be a little pay to win because you know these games like you might be able to do all the things but there might be a little pay to win i don't know if it'll be completely riddled with it but i think it'll have a good amount of stuff to purchase like maybe if you want to continue playing like you have a limit on the day i guess anything is pay to win basically with mobile games but I think it'll be like a five dollar uh, game and there'll be like a bunch of things to purchase and um, all that stuff. So I don't really know much about Diablo Immortal. They didn't give us much to go off of. They haven't really talked about it lately. But uh, yeah, that's my Diablo Immortal news prediction. For World of Warcraft, I think I get again, we're going to get a Sylvanas themed expansion. I've been on the fence about they're making a third faction because they've hinted at it very hard. But I don't think it's going to be a third faction. I think um, we're either going to defeat her or she's going to become the Lich Queen or like something's going to happen or maybe there's a cool character plot. Well, she was she knew something all along and she saves the day. There might be a cool plot twist with her. We've been waiting for a plot twist all of BFA and it never really came. I think Sylvanas is awesome. She's my second favorite character. Well, she's tied with Arthas for my favorite characters ever. Sylvanas and Arthas. I was a big fan of Warcraft 3. And um, I think they're cool. Like, they kind of drive the story forward with um, their personalities. And you can, like, build expansions around them. So I think it'll be a Sylvanas-themed expansion for World of Warcraft. Uh, for Hearthstone, I think the same thing. It'll be, like, something, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the card's going to be. The card might be a Sylvanas card. I'm not sure. They already have a Sylvanas card, so maybe um, it'll be a different type of card that we don't know about. Maybe the Hearthstone guys can <laughs> actually know more than me. I don't know what card is not in the game. Maybe Zappy Boy. A Zappy, is Zappy Boy in the game? Maybe a Zappy Boy uh, Hearthstone card would be fun. For Overwatch 2, I think we're going to get some kind of PvE or story mode in Overwatch. I feel like as soon as they introduced Junkenstein's Revenge and saw how popular it was with the fans. I know I played the hell out of Junkenstein the first uh, the first year it was available. This is like two or three years now we've had it. Man, it was so much fun. And all me and my friends could think about was, damn, like they should make a story mode like this because this is so much fun. And like, uh, I think that's maybe when it started or around that time they saw the success of what it could be. Or maybe they uh, had the plans from the beginning since Overwatch never had a campaign from the beginning and they always thought, hey, if this takes off, we'll add it later and we'll focus on that later. And um, I think that's smart. Like you do one thing really good and then you add a second thing later on. Um, I know Overwatch has been suffering by not getting that much patches lately. So that's unfortunate because their team has probably been working on this new project. It kind of shows, right? Like Overwatch hasn't really added much lately. 
And it kind of shows that maybe there's something big missing from the game or where's the developers? What are they doing? They're just giving us skins. They've probably been working on another game. So I feel like Overwatch 2 is going to be like a PvE or RPG type story version of the game. And it'll kind of be alongside of the PvP version of the game. Almost like, yeah, a continuation or an add-on, like a crazy expansion pack, right? Paid expansions, maybe. I guess for the big prediction, I believe there's going to be some kind of bundle. Like there's a lot of weird emphasis on like the Blizzard Arcade. It's so, like you can see like you can get this kind of stuff and download that like Blackthorn, Lost Vikings, um, Warcraft 3. They're upgrading all their old games. If you notice like Warcraft 3, Warcraft 1 and 2 got announced. Uh, GOG, I think it's called Good Old Gaming. They did Diablo 1. So I think Diablo 1 will be on the list. I think it'll be like either i'd say it's blizzard right so 4.99 a month and you can play every game besides world of warcraft and then they might have a bundle or it might come bundled with world of warcraft maybe like 15.99 or something like that 15.99 and you can play every blizzard game besides new releases right so like let's say it's five bucks and you can play D1, D2, all the Warcraft stuff, Blackthorn Vikings, Rock and Roll Racing, Starcraft, Anthology. Maybe you get monthly skin in Heroes of the Storm if you're a subscriber. Maybe you get a monthly card pack, bone like a bunch of card packs in Hearthstone. Um, maybe Overwatch, you get uh, X amount of loot boxes. And you know you get to play Diablo 3 even if you don't own it. Like If you're a subscriber to the Blizzard Pass, is whatever you want to call it. I feel like there'll be some kind of subscription service that encompasses a lot of their games. Apple just released it. A lot of games are kind of bundling their services together. It kind of makes sense to me. And then if you have a World of Warcraft, you get access to classic and regular, right? So if you just pay one more dollar a month, then you get access to everything else or maybe two more dollars a month. Then you're looking at $16.99. It doesn't sound so bad if you're already paying for WoW, you drop in two more dollars and then you can play all of the stuff that's currently available. And then as they release new games, you know what I mean? You'd have to pay for it. And then like after a year or two years, maybe it goes to the Blizzard Pass. And then maybe they make fun, I don't know, side projects or I don't know. I feel like that's something that they'll do. But let me know what you guys think. I think it'll be some sort of monthly pass all encompassing with everything. They can actually bundle everything with a World of Warcraft subscription. But I don't think that makes sense as much because a lot of people don't want to play WoW and they don't want to pay for it, but they will pay for a bunch of the arcade games bundled together. If you look at everything, that's probably like a $500 value, something like that. I don't know, four to 500. I didn't do the math on it, but for just five bucks a month. So it would take a while for you to lose money or something. Like Maybe even $2.99 even just to play all the stuff, you know, just to get even access to Overwatch for $2.99 a month or $5 a month seems plausible for me that's my big prediction that maybe no one's talking about is some sort of subscription type service uh one of the most popular questions i've been getting lately is what do you want in diablo 4 so like you know it's coming if it is coming what do you want in it what do you want to see in it i know Riker just did a video on this so shout out to Riker for probably inspiring the community to think about what they might want in a future diablo game i'd want three things okay are you ready? Let's do this together, chat. Number one, lots of builds, okay? What I mean by that is like tons of unique ways to play. However we get there is totally fine with me, whether there's like an, I like old school talent trees, you know, um, interesting legendaries, not just built off like multipliers and damage reduction, just tons and tons and tons of builds like a rpg sandbox i think whenever we make a new character in skyrim or this game called outer worlds just came out and the discovery of new builds and just making a bunch of wacky crazy things that you never thought of if you want to dual wield shields is sounds stupid but there might be a way to make it work and you're proud of your build and um, it's, yeah, it's just the discovery of new builds is so important, I think, for RPGs in general, let alone ARPGs. And um, I think that'll be really good if you just, you just go with the mindset of people are going to make all kinds of stuff and let's give them the tools if they want to do like a thorns build, maybe a fire thorns build or 
a dual wielding shields like we said or dual wielding wands or i don't know just like crazy things i think breeds creativity and makes the game so it makes your playthrough seem really unique and fun and um having like old school talent trees really does help facilitate that like um i just googled old school talent trees and like all this all the wow stuff comes up right having like different classes or like i want to play a mage but what if there was a blood mage way to play and all your skills got turned into blood skills and that just seems so interesting and so cool and what if you want to play an arcane mage and then like with wave of force or something and then there was spells to augment that and um, a play style around that and then over time you can add more and more items and tweak the existing items and uh, i think that would be awesome all my favorite games used to use talent trees world of warcraft diablo 2 freaking league of legends used to have talent trees and i would sit there all the time and just like just yeah just nitpick and just min max every detail depending on what i was doing i miss them i want them just add lots of builds just do it forehead okay the second thing i want all right number two um chase items carrots massive amounts of chase items into the game i think it's again just of the utmost important is for us to always have goals and strive for things to do to get to farm imagine in diablo 3 if there was a rare weapon skin like how many times do we see uh ingeom right all the time you can't change the transmog of ingeom but what if there was like a 0000, 000 a point zero 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 one chance to get a gold ingeom or to get a different weapon skin right we have the scorn and then we have the ghost scorn and then every time you look at that item, you have a little bit of excitement in the back of your head. Maybe you're numb to all the drops, but in the back of your head, you'll know that, damn, I might get something today that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And I think things like that, a low, low, like transmog, you know what I mean, is more important than farming Paragon over time. I feel like those kind of things, it'll, it'll keep you driving forward. Loot, transmogs, you see your friend, you're like, wait, why does your helmet look like that? Why does it have smoke coming out of it? Or how did you get a gold version of that? Or some weapon skin or something? I think always having something to strive for and to feel like you're progressing is important. Um, I just hope they don't do it with Paragon again. So lots of chase items. I know in Pokemon, they have shiny Pokemon, like a one in 4,000 chance for you to get a freaking shiny Caterpie. But when it does happen, it feels really really awesome i can show you a clip i farmed star you for 20 hours and it felt it felt amazing let me let me actually bring that up dude yo check out this cringe not nearly the 20 same hour the 20 hour star you hunt <gasps> oh yeah baby let's grown, go grown man let's getting go chat grown man getting excited the over pokemon is dude. real what i look so happy dude it took a long time the shut up blood um so if you're watching this it's a white star you it's shiny. Look how excited I am. I'm so nervous to catch this stupid thing. So having long chase items is just adds another element to the game, increases the longevity, and it's just really awesome. <laughs> you can even do that with like portrait frames and you know, um, maybe follower skins or there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, UI overlays, freaking, yeah, portrait frames, I talked about that, pennants, wings, all kinds of stuff just chase items okay so fun ways to build lots of things to strive for even a, a leaderboard would be considered a chase item because you're always striving for that higher rank you're always striving for that kind of stuff that would be said considered a chase item also and the third thing i think that diablo 4 needs above all else is a mobile version of it like a mobile version i'm just kidding no it doesn't need that it needs a reason i'll put it in caps a reason for everything right reason a lot of um arpgs i've played there's a cool mechanics or leveling like um, pagan or like grim dawn is awesome but there's no like leaderboard there's no reason for you to gear other than your own personal enjoyment which is not uh not good anymore i don't think not enough anymore um unless maybe you're playing a really really compelling like a witcher or something it has to be as good as the witcher to be worth our time these days i would say i'm more into service games so there needs to be a reason dude 
I'm playing WoW Classic. There's no PvP yet in WoW Classic. We're currently in phase one. So there's no reason for me to gear as a PvP player. I'm just literally just waiting for months and months and months. There's no reason for me to farm gold past your epic mount. You need a reason to do stuff. Otherwise, it becomes, yeah, you need motivation to know to do what you're doing. Uh, I think the same thing, Diablo 3, I love because my reason for gearing is the leaderboard for my own personal progression and competing with other people on the leaderboard. So it's a combination of both. I think once you have a bunch of ways to play and uh, lots of things to shoot for and strive for, like even like chase items would be like daily quests, um, things like that that give you a reason to play and things to go for. I guess that you can kind of mix in chase items and a reason, but I think they should be separate because the carrots and the long-term carrots, long-term achievements are definitely different, right? So let's say you add PVP to Diablo 4. Now that's a reason for me to gear out because I don't want to get raffle stomped by the next person. Let's say you add a, a ladder reset or a leaderboard to Diablo 4. Well, now I have a reason to grind my ass off and, and you know, forego friends and family relations because I just want to sit at my computer and grind gear, right? Let's say you add some kind of PVP rift race event where whoever does the fastest rift or the fastest blank map can you know what i mean competes on a pve versus pvp leaderboard that gives me a reason to do stuff right so i think it's really important and um especially if there's like a town hub i know i think diablo immortal has like a town hub where more than four people can join and i think they were saying that and um you know looking cool and having my gold transmogs also gives me a reason to farm chase items so I can dab on everybody and show them how much hard work I put in. I wear my cosmic wings because there's a reason I think it looks cool and other people see that I took the time to farm it, just like in WoW Classic. If you see someone in tier two gear or you see someone with the freaking sulfurous hammer or whatever, you know that they look great and there's a reason why they did it because they look cool and they can take it into PVP or PVE and crush faces with it. So I think these are the three core things I would build my game around. And I know it's kind of like they're broad concepts, but I think it's really important for Diablo 4 to not forget that we like making builds, man. We like making wacky, crazy builds. And um, we like chase items and we need a reason to do everything. Otherwise, it's literally pointless, right? And you can branch off for hours and talk about all kinds of stuff. They need economy and all this stuff. But I think those are my three reasons. Definitely let me know in the comments below what are your three reasons. And um, I want to hear it, man. I want to know what's important to the community. In terms of other games, there's really no other game. I might dabble in Lost Ark a little bit this week, but I'm so busy with uh, Diablo announcements and getting ready for starter builds. I don't really have time for like other games. But I am going to pick up the Switch tomorrow. I mean, not the Switch, but the Aladdin and the Lion King classic games are getting remastered in 1080 with like a bunch of different modes. Do you remember those games from uh, Sega, uh, Super Nintendo era? Yeah, the Aladdin and the Lion King are getting remastered. It's going to be super lit. <laughs> They're coming bundled in one package. It's going to be on the Switch. And I believe um, here's another screenshot. I believe on Xbox everywhere. So that's super exciting. I'll probably do a playthrough on my second channel about them. Apparently you can like rewind time and go back in time. So that'll be super dope. And they're going to include the trade show demo playable for the first time. I'm excited, man. It's a throwback. We've been having retro hour anyway, so it'll be fun to go through and play them again and just see how terrible I am at platformers these days. If it's not known now, it'll definitely be known once we play this. Big shout out to Leah, the latest patron. Thank you guys. When you guys take the time to support on Patreon, I really, really appreciate it, man. It goes a long way in supporting the stream and the podcast and everybody on, wait, Leah, wait, wait, Diablo 3 Remastered confirmed? Wait a minute. Oh, for predictions, I think we're gonna get Diablo 2. I think I forgot about Diablo 2. <laughs> yeah, uh, shout out to Leah. And I think we're gonna get Diablo 2 Remastered also. I think it'll be part of the whole uh, I think I got the Blizzard Pass thing. I think it'll be part of that, or you can purchase it obviously separately if you want to own it. So yeah, I hope, put your predictions in the comments and whoever gets close, 
Maybe I'll go back and check on a future podcast and see who was right. We'll have a little fantasy draft here going. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what your predictions are and all that. And um, we'll compare, man. We'll see who gets it, who wins. So yeah, shout out to the patrons, the Twitch subs, the followers, anybody that's supported over the long term. I hope you like the video podcast better. This, li- this week was super lit. We had a lot of news and rumors and predictions. So yeah, it was really good to do a video podcast on this week particularly. Uh, yeah, just because of how much stuff we had going on. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. You'll have a bunch of BlizzCon videos coming out. I'll be streaming from uh, 2 to 4 p.m. the day of BlizzCon. And I'm going to try to stream from the hotel room if possible. Thank you for listening to my Blood Heart podcast. And again, I hope you like the video format. That's going to be all for me today. This is the Bubble Bubble Bloodshed, and I'm out of here. Peace.